Hello, and welcome to the first of a series of what we are calling Let's Go Shorts, which are five-minute presentations you can listen to and view on your own time, where we address the issues dealing with the disease of obesity. My name is Pete Ammon, and I'm a obesity medicine doctor here in Portland, Maine, who has worked with the Maine Health Let's Go Pediatric and Adult Obesity Program since 2014. We will be producing these monthly recordings to help you be more comfortable and competent to deal with the disease of obesity with your patients. The first question we'll ask, is obesity a choice or a disease? The dictionary defines a disease as a condition that impairs normal functioning and is typically manifested by distinguishing signs and symptoms. The Obesity Medicine Association defines obesity as a chronic, relapsing, multifactorial, neurobehavioral disease when an increase in body fat promotes adipose tissue dysfunction and abnormal fat mass physical forces, resulting in an adverse metabolic, biomechanical, and psychosocial health consequences. That is a mouthful. If obesity is considered a disease, does it invalidate the importance of a patient's behavior and the choices they make for proper nutrition and getting enough exercise? Does this remove a patient's responsibility for gaining weight and the comorbid conditions that are associated with it? What we do know is that there are many factors that contribute to a patient's risk for obesity, including prenatal exposures, birth size, genetics, inflammation, medications, culture, socioeconomic factors, ability to afford healthy foods, access to a safe place to exercise, mental health conditions, lack of adequate sleep, and many others all contribute to the risk for obesity. It is for these reasons that the American Medical Association designated obesity as a disease not even 10 years ago in 2013, with the hope we will continue to develop more treatment options, do more research, and improve the care of patients with this disease. This is not an issue of willpower, but is a disease process that has complicated gut and brain pathways that can be targeted for treatment. The designation of obesity as a disease should also help for funding for research and increase advocacy for insurance companies to cover effective treatments. Patients with obesity often have an increase in body fat, which may be related to eating too many calories or lack of physical activity. However, these patients may have impairment in metabolic pathways and disordered signaling for hunger, satiety, and fullness. Often, dieting fails related to two metabolic adaptations which we exhibit when dieting. One, when we lose weight, our metabolism actually slows down and we burn fewer calories during the day. And two, we often have an increase in hunger hormones to protect the set point, which makes it difficult to sustain dieting long term. There may be many different causes, including genetics, stress induced, menopause related, medication related, and others. When we think about obesity as a disease in pediatrics, we think about the endocrine and immune response, or sick fat disease, which can cause impaired fasting glucose, metabolic syndrome, hypertension, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and others. We think about the physical response of carrying extra weight, which can affect asthma, GERD, high blood pressure, intertrigo, and increased stress on weight-bearing joints. And we also think about the psychological response to carrying extra weight, which can affect quality of life, can increase isolation from peers, increase risk for bullying, increase anxiety, depression, and eating disorders. Children who have obesity often become adults with obesity. And obesity, we think, is associated with upwards of 200 different disease processes, including diabetes, fatty liver disease, depression, sleep apnea, heart disease, and upwards of 13 different types of cancer. So the take-home message from our first lesson is that obesity should be thought of as a disease with multiple different causes, metabolic pathways, and complications. This disease cannot be treated episodically like a strep throat or a sprained ankle, but needs to be thought of as other chronic conditions we see in medicine, such as allergies, high blood pressure, and depression. It can be lifelong and recurrent and have significant impacts on longevity and quality of life. Next month, we focus on the stigma and bias which can be associated with this disease.